something about Camilo and the Camilo Association as opposed to the chaos which, of which uh, Camilo in fact is a fog in a way. I, I was going to try to answer why we made the option to start from scratch again because this is not an obvious option. We have been only one I think in the world in the e-learning world to do this. What are we going to do after Camilla 2.0? And of course, there will be the live demo and opportunity to ask questions. Well, we used to be, all the people that, were, that are now in Camilla used to be working at one point or another with the chaos. that uh, platform. You saw there the free version that they call it still is basically open source. It is a limited version and it's a paying version that has the full features of the platform. We were not happy about that because we have been contributing, uh, contributing a lot to the development of the chaos in previous years and we were not happy to see that part of the contributions in fact uh, were not available in the free version. An even more basic uh, element we were totally unhappy about is that there was no decision-making structure. The chaos is in fact, in reality, a one-person company. And in the end, that person was a person deciding on everything. At one point in time there was uh, that person agreed with starting an association to be able to come to some decision making structure but then he dropped that again and there was complete stalemate. So at one point in time people talked with one another and what happened really is that nearly all of those people contributing to the development of the chaos decided to start their own platform and this has become familiar. And this uh, choice was made, was made public in January of this year, so it's all very recent. As this is a complete new project, we made sure that uh, it would remain an open project, an open source project. So there has been made a radical choice for open source, a basic CDL version. We have organized a uh, not-for-profit uh, not association, the Camilo Association, and this one is open to all stakeholders, companies, non-profit organization, users, persons, and so on. But this is still, of course, a very recent, a very recent evolution. But for instance, we can see that in the board of directors now we have three companies represented and four non-profit organizations. So you see that this is a, a balanced situation. And very important also, the trademark of Camilo does not reside in the person of the company, but it does reside in the association. So we have made sure from the start that the decision-making body is Camilo Association. 
not one person, not one company, not even a selected group of persons. It's the association. Then why did we, at one point in time, start with Community 2.0? Well, the present structure of Camilo 1.8x, previously the Chaos 1.8, is too restrictive. Why? But just as most learning management system of the first generation, it is simply a, a toolbox, a set of loosely integrated tools, which more or less stand on their own uh, together with the learning management system. It's very cost-centric, which is one of the reasons why uh, many private companies will use totally different uh, programs for their collaboration services, for their e-learning, that we call the cost metaphor, is really more of an obstacle in that kind of context. All data in the blackboards, the Moodles, and uh, the chaoses, or previous Camillos of this world, all saved within a course. There is usually a lot of application of data. So if, for instance, you use a set of documents in five or six courses, they all then duplicate it each time, and you will end up with a whole lot of double data, which of course is nonsensical from an IT point of view. And then even in a uh, learning situation such, that, such as that of a university or a university college like mine, the course me metaphor is far too restrictive. Huh? We also use Camido for projects, for communication within specific groups or communities, for collaboration that is not course related, and then of course a course is not really the good environment to do such things. Another element that is important that integration with other applications in those first generation uh, platforms is possible but quite difficult. That's why we have opted for a completely new structure. And the kernel of the of the structure is what you see in the middle. So really the main part is what we call the content object repository. There are some learning platforms that have some kind of CMS. Blackboard has an external content management system connected to the e-learning environment. Moodle is working for, uh, for Moodle 2.0 for a content repository, but only for documents. So you see, it's all uh, just work going on in the margin of an existing platform. So we have chosen for a completely new platform based, totally based on the content object, object the repository. So what happens? Objects in our system are owned by the user. This makes Camilo 2, user-driven, because each user has his or her own repository. So the objects are not in a course, or not in a particular application, they are in the repository. And then these objects can be published in one or more courses, still exist of course, or other applications. They can be published there, but the object is never there. It remains in the repository. But you can publish an object, and the publication can have a set of features. And this set, this set of features can differ from application to application, but it makes sense. So you get a, a set of objects in the repository. The repository, these objects can be published in courses, many other applications and many new applications that we can't think of that will probably exist in a few years' time. And uh, you don't get any replication of data. 
Next to the content object, uh, object repository, you see users and rights. So without entering any application, you can already say in the repository that you want to share objects with other people or groups of people. So this works as a kernel on its own. More on a technical level, you can see that we use uh, database abstraction to be able to run the system on different uh, databases. We run it on MySQL, but uh, there is a partner of all who is going to learn, uh, run it on Postgres SQL. And an even certainly very interesting feature is that we also connect are able to connect to external content. And you see a number of environments which we can already connect to. Huh? More about that later and in the demonstration. The important thing to remember about application is that everywhere we have been thinking about building a generic tool. So it's always, we always use frameworks to do things. So we have a framework to connect, connect with external repositories. And these repositories you see the, there are simple examples of the framework being put to use for specific repositories. But it's fairly easy to add new repository as there is already this framework. Hmm? We have the same thing, for instance, for web services. Yes? Yes, yes, indeed. This will also be possible. Um, in fact, uh, Camilo, this is of course an admin setting, is not limited to its own uh, implement implementation at one particular place. You can say that uh, your objects, for instance, can be shared with the world, huh? can be open to the world. So this is an admin setting. If the admin opens this possibility, people can share their objects uh, with other people using the same kind of platform. Uh, we have also our colleagues from the Geneva University have made a Fedora implementation, which means that using Fedora they can share uh, all the objects in Camilo with all other universities, with the central Fedora repository, in fact, which harvests the objects from various platforms. So in Switzerland, this has been uh, demanded by the government that all learning data in all universities can be share shared over those various universities. And our colleagues have done this for Camilla. Let's have a look at the repository as this is the kernel of our system. Camilla 2.0. What I'm showing is a beta 2, and the release is planned for December, so it's not very long anymore. But for instance, while I'm speaking here now, there is a code sprint going on in Brussels. That's something we do regularly. We organize code sprints for developers. They come together for two, three days, and work together, sit together, sometimes also with representatives from large user communities to work together and develop together. So such code sprint is going on now. Uh, yes. So what you see here is my personal repository. You can see that it is a beta version because some of the translations are not yet put into the system, so you get those queer things, uh, like the objects that I have shared. These are the objects that I have shared with other people. And this is something that has been shared with me. But basically, the repository here shows my objects, and these can be of various types. You see a lot of those. Huh? But that's, for instance, select documents. Then I get a view of my documents. I can uh, 
at its right, for instance, I can say, oh, I want to share this with this person, for instance. As simple as that, if there are groups defined, they can share them with groups. This is a somewhat private test version here that I'm running. More about how we publish from the repository, for instance, I'll show in the, during the demo. It has been crashing. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. But I don't see it. I didn't get the point. I'll, I'll get it here. No. So you see some of the advantages here on this uh, picture of Camilla 2 as compared to previous versions. You can be used with several database, database system, as I mentioned before. And it can be used for a variety of easily extendable applications. Huh? It has portal functionality, which is quite important to, to us. In fact, it has been running as a portal for over a year now at our colleagues of uh, University College Erasmus at Brussels, where they use CAS, which is one of the systems supported by Camillo for authentication, single sign-on. So you sign on into, oh sorry, into Camillo, and uh, you get access, for instance, to email and all other possible platforms of the University College. Uh, the web LCMS, as we know it from other systems, is still in the system, but you'll see in the demonstration that we have opened it up in this sense that many things that you used to do within a course can also be done on platform level. And these are the applications that are not course related. For instance, uh, what you have in many systems is a personal calendar, you have it on platform level, a portfolio, assessment, survey, forum, wiki, etc. They all exist on platform level. And many more are in the pipeline. One of the fun things about having an association, a democratic association, such as Camillo Association, is of course that you attract new people and that there is a lot of room for new initiatives and for a wider community. We have only just started and we see that there is a lot, uh, a lot of people are very much interested. So we see, we, we expect the association to grow quite quickly. What is the state of affairs? Well, you have a number of uh, elements that are completed. I can even drop largely now. Uh, we can say that we have no or very minimal loss of functionality and a lot of extra functionalities compared with the old system. We have an object-oriented kernel. We have the standard modules that used to be in the WebRCMS in one way or another are still there. Objects have a basic structure. This is the same for all types. Remember what I said about frameworks. We have simple objects, we have complex objects, Think about those Russian puppets. Huh? You can have a set of uh, objects within one object. Huh? A complex object can be part of another complex object. Think of those Russian puppets. We have versioning. We have a migration tool that is being tested uh, and that is largely completed, let's say 99%. We plan to migrate with the next academic year. We have 20,000 users and a lot of data, so we want to be very certain that everything is going to, to go smoothly. Huh? 
We have uh, assessment modules or assessment application surveys. Uh, we have competency-based assessment still under development, peer assessment already there. We have a framework of web services for exchanging data with other applications. This is uh, or can be quite an advantage as if you use web services, you can have live updates of your users, for instance, uh, if you can connect to an application, administrative application that also supports web services. We are already uses it, using it in a few instances. And some of our clients are really using those web services to update their user base. Administration section has been greatly improved and extended. Uh, there's no comparison possible with what used to be there in Tokeos, for instance. We have a basic rules and rights platform that has been uh, implemented for all major tools. We have a learning path. We have integration of DIM DIM as a video conference tool. Again, here we have something of an evolution we, which we are not totally happy about because the free version also of DIM DIM has been more or less limited. I've already mentioned portal functionality and the external repository integrations. So have, let's have a look at that. Yeah. So here I've, uh, before I uh, change the screen, I selected uh, my Google Docs. So here I have a complete view of what I have in my Google Docs, which are documents that I have shared with a number of persons or other people have shared with me. I'm, st I'm still in Camilo here. Huh? So the nice thing is that from Camilo, I can see what is in my Google Docs. And for instance, I have the whole structure here on the left hand of uh, what I have in Google Docs. And here I have a number of documents. For instance, let's see the latest agenda. And after the, the board, this is not an agenda, but uh, the minutes of, I can have a preview of that. I don't know whether you can see a lot of it. Anyhow, uh, I had to put it a bit smaller on the screen to uh, backtrack, in fact, the fact that this is a very low resolution with the projector. But anyhow, when I think, oh yes, this is the document I want, I can import it into the repository. If it is a Google Doc, I can import it as PDF, ODT, or Windows document. So let's, for instance, import this as a PDF. Okay, and if I, I'm back in my repository now, if I sort on the title, I can see it there. Huh? I can do whatever I want now. I can, for instance, say that I want to publish this. And here you see, I can publish such a document in one step, or a set of documents, I could have selected five or six, do various courses in one step. I'm only going to select one because this is fit for it. I can say, well, just put this in the Camilo community. So this is all what there is to it. Huh? The external uh, repository, there are many more. i just take one more example. We are experimenting a bit together with the colleagues of the University College Ghent with uh, Bidya Mosa. Uh, we are also exper experimenting with Mattenhorn. And this is, uh, again, uh, data that is it's coming from YouTube, but this particular example is, in fact, on the Media Mosa server at the University in Ghent. And there, well, it's playing as you can see. Huh? Just another example of how you can share, integrate, integrate your um, objects from other repository straight into your environment. Again, this is done through a framework. We now integrate, for instance, with Flickr, but there are already a few more of them 
uh, in the tube, in the pipeline, so that all, that will be available soon. And as a principle, if you would like to add another, you can use the same framework, making a few changes that depend on the API from the object you want to connect to, and you can create an, a connection to another repository. There was a question? No, okay. Let's return to Camilo, the presentation. Well, we have these external repositories. Something more about things we still have to do. It's a totally new product, so some streamlining will always be necessary, especially as to usability and accessibility. We are doing a lot to improve that before the release, but of course we are certain that the will be room for improvement afterwards, of course. Roles and rights, it's quite an, uh, uh, an important system that is there, so it's possible to extend it further to some of those applications or to deeper levels. You evaluate, yeah? Yes, oh. yes, yes. So it's and already pretty good, but it's yes. really For instance, for the WebL CMS, it's, uh, it's uh, it extend to the whole WebL CMS. You can say, for instance, as you can define that something new also in Camilo, we still call it courses, but that's just because it needs a name. Huh? You can also define types of courses and say, well, we link those tools with those courses. In a community, you won't have need of an assessment, for instance. And you will probably use a, a different uh, rights template. We, we will be working on rights template. That's something that is still missing. We have just a few uh, examples ready, but this should be improved. So what I'm thinking of that will, will certainly follow the, the release, the final release uh, in December, soon afterwards, is some more of those templates. Huh? For instance, if you say a community template will imply that in most cases, that is what I would expect, that all members of such a community have the same basic rights. You can all publish to a document tool, for instance. Whereas in a classical WebL CMS, it's only the course administrator who can do that. Uh, in fact, you don't even need this in Camilo because as a user, anyone can share with whoever he, he or she likes. But it's an extra, yeah. Yes, um, as long as you don't use the versioning system, if you don't say it's a new version, it means that all versions are, or all publications, let's put it clear, huh? it's, you only have one object in the repository. If this object is updated and you don't give it a new version, huh, you don't make it a new version, that's an option you always have when editing an object, you can say make it a new version. If you make it a new version, all published elements stay the same. So that's, let's say, for experimenting reason. If you want to make a change and implement it immediately, you simply don't save it as a new version. You simply save it, and then it will immediately be corrected everywhere. Because it's very simple. There's only one object. It's in the repository. OK? But uh, there has been a lot of work about namespacing. For instance, the, uh, one of the good sprints some a month ago dealt with a number of uh, uh, refactoring elements that had to be, well, had to be, it's not really a necessity, but uh, people wanted them to, to be there, to be uh, better working, so we do this more or less continually, of course. Huh? But in fact, uh, the important element is that you don't have the situation as you used to have before, that you have all those various uh, objects in courses duplicated everywhere. An object is never present in an application. It's a publication that is there. And it links to the object. So we have a very sound basic architecture. And this makes it also very easy to put new applications. Because we develop, we develop this from the point of view of a learning environment, a university. But I can very 
very well imagine that this type of platform is very interesting for companies too. And it is a web application. Something that we haven't paid a lot of attention to for the time being is it would be very simple to use this kernel to make a very powerful CMS. In fact, there used to be a small project, there are 10 or 15 websites that uh, use uh, an older version, a two year or three year old version of Camilo 2, simply to support a website as a CMS. But uh, this is not our first aim, so we haven't put a lot of effort into that, but the structure certainly fits that. We have made a structure, and that is something that uh, has to do with uh, future development, so I'm running a bit ahead of this. We have made it in such a way that we can now already be certain that it is uh, very easy to uh, build a single user version of this. It's now already possible for any user to export and import all of his objects, part of them or all of them. So you can take them with you. So once we say, well, we simply make a single user version of Camilo 2, you leave your institutional context, you can still publish your portfolio on the web. You come back into a company where they use this or a similar platform, you simply plug in your data and you use them again. So that's a, the type of future we see for the product. And this will be really lifelong learning and working. Yes, I'm going to say something about that when I'm talking about the future. So, I leave you a bit on your hunger now. So, what you see here, uh, you can read more about the roadmap, roadmap and support. We have an alpha, beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 2 has been released recently. Uh, November 22nd, we have the release of the release candidate, followed soon in December by the release of Camilla 2.0. We aim at a very symbolic date, so not difficult to imagine what it would be. What else Camilla 2? Well, something I'm uh, very much interested about because I, I, my background is that of a uh, computational linguist, is automatic generation of metadata. The technology to generate uh, there's metadata on, basing, on the basis of uh, state-of-the-art linguistic technology is there. You simply have to put all the elements together and bring them into the system. We still have to do something about standards and norms. For instance, our assessment tool is basically QTI compatible, so that's a good thing. Portfolio norms are still a thing that are quite a lot in, in evolution. You have the various IMS norms. You have SCORM, which is a difficult thing because, uh, um, in fact, we could say that our architecture is far too modern for SCORM. Uh, so we are thinking about an, another way. It's possible to, to uh, integrate SCORM 1.2 in Camilo, more or less, most of it. Uh, we have tested it with some packages, and most of them work. But we would like to, to go further on that and we will probably start a new project um, based on the same generic point of view that we always use. That is, we will try to uh, make a SCORM solution that can be used by any platform, in fact, which wants to, learn, to, to, to add SCORM compatibility. But we are not very convinced about that. You know, those people who are... Uh, uh, who know the subject, they know that most people think that SCORM is a totally outdated norm. But it's the only one that is there. Hmm? And it's used as a commercial argument. That's a problem, so it makes it difficult as a platform to avoid it altogether, but still. I have already been talking about uh, using Camilo as a personal learning environment. It's really 
already very much ready to, to do so with the connection to all social external repositories and the like. We have already a, a, a large framework of web services, but it's always uh, possible to generalize that and to bid on that. And one of the interesting elements of Camilo 2 is that it's not difficult to add new applications. One you get, once you get the flavor, and if you are uh, familiar with object-oriented development, of course, then of course, then it's fairly simple. There is already uh, something like an uh, application framework there to help you. Yeah. Uh, do you know which level it's, uh, it's uh, friendly to extend existing objects? Um, yeah. Again, here we use uh, a framework of, of, you could call it a framework, a basic object. And making a new object simply uh, implies that you add a few lines, XML lines. Not really lines of code. Does that answer your question? Yeah. behavior of the object and uh, its, its uh, functionality, then you have to program more, more yeah. or less to... Again, your question, I think, as far as I can see, uh, comes from the fact that uh, you don't distinguish clearly enough between publication and object. The object is an object. This doesn't change. It's the same everywhere. The way it is used can depend on the publication features. And these you can influence. But then again, this is not really coding a lot. No. Because that's one of the attractive elements. Uh, if I go back to the demonstration just in a few moments, you'll see that there are already far too many, in fact, as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, types of objects. Uh, uh, because all users will, will uh, panic a bit if they see that in a way, because they're used to a sim simple environment. The environment is still as simple to use. We have paid a lot of attention to that. You can still use it in the way you were using it before. I'm going to show that. But still, um, the possibilities in the long term are really enormous. And there is al already an enormous number of objects there. And this shows how easy it is to add different types of objects. If it weren't as easy, they wouldn't grow every month. So, time to go back to the demo. So we have we've had a quick look at the repository and the external repositories. So sorry, let's have a look at the home page. Yeah, there we are. This is my home page. Again, as a user, you are the one who decides how it's going to look like. For instance, I can add a new block. And now I have the, I can, for instance, uh, have a few on my messages. Just to take one example. I don't like the place it is there, so let's put it here. It's as simple as that. Huh? I can uh, make more examples, and of course the list of things that you could add here or mostly elements that are internal to the platform, not all of them. If you add applications, you can put those on your home screen too. I have here, for instance, uh, the New York Times as an uh, RSS feed. I have some more in my repository. I simply choose the one from my re repository that I like. For instance, let's change to the Times, or I could have added another one. You see, this is implemented immediately. Huh? I have my personal calendar put on, on my home pages. It's, uh, it's useful for me. It's uh, very simple. I simply click on the event of today, and there you get it. Huh? You have a various view, as uh, you're used to. So this is all very recognizable for people who used to work in this way.
So if I want to edit such a document, I'm, I'm, I'm now in an application. If I say edit, what I'm doing in fact is adding the object that is in my repository. Huh? That's why I can say if I want to create as a new version. If I don't want it to be changed. Again, put all kinds of attachments to it and then simply click update. I can, for instance, share it with more people. This is my personal calendar. And still I can, you see, I've shared it with a number of people. I could, for instance, share it uh, with someone extra and say publish. As simple as that. Huh? Now the object, I haven't changed the object. If you paid attention, I haven't changed the object, but I have changed the publication features. Huh? What do you say? Um, he'll see it, he or she, in this case it was a she, she, she will see it when, he, when she, she clicks on my shared objects. And it will be there according to the rights I have implemented uh, in her, if she can for instance use it or reuse it, which is two possible rights that I can give. I can say you can uh, view it, use it, reuse it. Reuse is a very drastic right. This, means, this simply means here is my object. It's now <coughs> your object. And you can do whatever you like. It has no connection more with the original object. There you get two objects. Uh, one in the other repository, one in mine. Um, let's, for instance, go to a course just to, get, to uh, give an example of something that is, uh, well, you see, I published something uh, to the community, community just a moment ago. But for instance, suppose that I want to add more documents. Huh? I simply say publish. I can upload new documents. For instance, I, as I'm always forced to do in the old implementations of learning environments, but here I can simply say browse my uh, repository. Huh? Show all. And I can, for instance, say, well, let's select a few. You see that I'm a course, I, I have a course menu there. Huh? Publish selected. Okay. And there, again, I have a number of uh, publication features. One which is very interesting, because for any object you publish in a course, you can say, well, I want to be able to evaluate it, which is quite nice with students, of course. Huh? So if I click on create evaluation, this will offer me the opportunity to give marks or another type of evaluation to that object. So it's not, evaluation is not something that we use for exercises in assessment. We can evaluate any type of object we use in a course. So you see that this is a totally new philosophy. Huh? It's generic. Yeah? Could you elaborate a bit on how that matches the learning of metaphor in the system? Because I, I don't see it in the, in the tool list anymore. What, what is the yes, it's still there. This, it's still there. The learning part is still there. It's more powerful. You can put more types of objects in it, but it's still there, so there's no, no basic change as to the user. Behind the scenes, there's an enormous, enormous change. Huh? But does that mean that every object in principle has functionality like don't access this object unless other objects has some kind of status or things like that? Um, that's not uh, an, an element, a characteristic of the object. It's a characteristic of the learning object, uh, the learning path object, which is a complex, ob complex object. This would not make any sense if you only have a simple object. Huh? So this is, this, 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 that's why we, we distinguish, and I made the reference to Russian uh, puppets. Huh? Mm -hmm. Any object can be part of another object. And a learning path is, of course, a complex object in which a number of objects can be published. Can you show us the learning 
Yes, of course, I'll show you just in a moment. So <laughs> you're curious, huh? But here you see a good example of the features that we have. One of the fixed for instance that didn't work well previously is if you, has, if you had uh, RSS on your platform, you uploaded something to a course, anything, huh? and it was there, and then you couldn't put it hidden. But in the meantime, it could have been picked up, or was really suddenly picked up by your RSS feed, and your students could access it, which led to a number of problems. For instance, if a, a teacher has published an exam beforehand, to be able to, for his students to see it later, this could have been picked up by the RSS. Here, before you publish something, you can say, make it hidden. It will never show up in an RSS feed. Hmm? So you have a number of elements that you can choose here. Jean-Marie. Yes? Um, my previous question about the, uh, examining the object, the, uh, those features or elements, uh, that can be possible, right, to add more elements? Uh, yes, but these have nothing to do with the object, you have to do with the publication features of that object in a particular application. And one has to do that in the XML file or not? Basically, yes. Okay. They are now there. This is the traditional way of working. Huh? That's how people used to work, but now they don't need to go outside of their repository if the stuff is already in their repository and you don't get any duplication of data. But let's go back to uh, the course. Um, do I have a uh, learning path here? Uh, I know I have no, in the community I don't have a learning path. I have to, to switch to a different course. Let's see, introduction to philosophy, yes. I think I have a learning path there. Yes. Five minutes, okay. I won't be able to show anything, uh, all of it, of course, a few things. Uh, most of the questions have already been asked, that's something. Well, here I started with, with a video. Huh? It's not really necessary to show it, but still. We can go on. This is a glossary. A glossary that is something that used to be there in a previous version, but was not very useful, but you see how useful it can be in this kind of context. Huh? I have a test assessment, which has nothing to do with philosophy, you know. I simply used one that I uh, had made to play around with. This is a very nice type, it's a new type, it, it wasn't, it is not there in any of the previous, uh, I'm just giving a few answers, you know. I can be completely around. I will be completely wrong. But let, let's get, try to have some of them right. This is very, this is it's nice because it's a matrix question. A matrix question, once you, you get to use a matrix question, you don't want to use anything else. It, because you com it combines the, the feature of, for instance, multiple choice questions. So it can be, the, of course, it's a simple one, open source. It's also partly uh, an LCMS, of course. And yeah. Didn't make that one myself, you know. That's a tricky one, you know what a Swiss capital is? It's not what you think it is. You simply see a number of, uh, you can't get that wrong. Or the number of types of questions we have, I think Germany is one, France will probably be two. I would think United Kingdom three, Spain four, Belgium last, obviously, and the Netherlands, well, they're very close to Belgium. This must be it, I think. Uh, next. That's a nice one, an easy one, of course. This saddle. But just to show how easy it is also for students to work on this, huh? where do we? Got the gears, the front light is another very easy one. But just an example, it can be a very complex picture, of course, where you ask very difficult questions. Huh? You have a fill in the blanks. I, I filled it out before, no. Uh, uh, 
I'll give only one answer. Here you have an open question. You have to comment on this video that uh, we have seen part of it before. So I won't play it, I'll simply click Submit. You see how it works, and huh? then you get uh, feedback of what is wrong and right. This was all right. And then of course I made, I filled out a lot of things. I didn't fill out a lot of things there, so I only got only one in six. And you see that you can have various answers for any field in an uh, over question, in, in, in uh, fill in the question, fill in the blanks. And here, of course, that's something that the teacher would have to grade later on. So this is basically, for the end user, it very much resembles the learning path that was there before. Huh? Just let me conclude by uh, going back to, to the repository and just give one more Example of so, yes. So uh, basically, the learning path is a way to uh, uh, to, to make uh, assessment tests for uh, Not necessarily. It can be for self-study, for instance. Huh? We use it a lot for self-study and for distance education. We have a number of dist distance education. That could be an element. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this this could be an element. Huh? So you can have questions. You can say that if you uh, answer a set of if if your uh, marks you get in in uh, the test are good high enough, you can go on. Otherwise, you can't go on. But for instance, have to do more exercises, things like that. So simply. Uh, I could, for instance, publish this um, absent notice simply to all of my courses, because I, I'm here at Tido's and I will be at the Onderwijsdagen in a few days. So now it's Sunday, so I don't have any lessons, but uh, could be next week, of course. So now in all my courses, there is a notice saying, beware, I won't give any courses those next few days. I don't have to publish that in each and every course that I have to go to as it used to be, get the announcement, publish it, then return to another course, do the same again, and duplicate all the data. No, I can simply do it from the repository, publish it to all my courses, and in one step. So, any further questions? Yeah, I have a question. Can you show the reports for the um, for the for the yeah for the for the exercises? Quiz. Yeah, for the exercises. For instance, yes. Well, let's uh, go to evaluation. You have an assessment tool that is there, not within a course, <coughs> not within a learning part, but as a tool. Huh? So, uh, I think that uh, I can, for instance, have a look at this one. And there I get what the student made of it. I can give extra feedback if I want to. I can change the marks if I think that the student has, has selected something which is, after all, not so stupid, huh, for instance. I can do that. Or I can give marks. Well, I already did here. So for instance, this was an open question. I can give marks on the answer of that open question. Let's make it a bit lower. He didn't write a lot about it anyhow. And everywhere, as you can see, I can add extra feedback if I like. I simply save this and have saved my marks, my changed marks. Um, yeah, you can also export all of this. Huh? That's something that is typical for any object and the things that, that uh, you do, you always have an export function wherever that makes any sense. So I, here I can export it to Excel. Okay. Yeah, uh, can, do you also have a summary that you see the scores or the scores per part? Um, yes, if I go to uh, my courses, huh? I am only in three courses. You see here they are arranged according to type. Huh? I have, let, let's say, general courses. You have those of the curriculum. 
and you have community courses. That's what I have within my system. You can define any time with any type with its own characteristic as an admin. If you have the rights, you can build on that and define any type you need. And of course, I didn't show anything about the administration. Huh? Uh, you have, there is a lot more there. I didn't show anything. I still have a quick look to show uh, something to show at least a quick view on what the portfolio is. Huh? Uh, so portfolio, again, you can publish various elements in a portfolio. That's a profile. This is a simple uh, document, a short, short CV. This is a demo I gave in New York a few months ago. And this is a pump, uh, yeah, something my colleagues made of me. Huh? And again, you can see everywhere you can give feedback. Huh? Thank you. 